Hello everyone. So earlier today I was playing RuneScape because I have a problem and I was wondering, uh, you know, the bot detection in here is really not that good, uh, apparently, because there seems to be bots everywhere. I mean, they supply the economy, so that's always nice. But I was wondering how uh, feasible it would be to institute a IP banning f uh, feature into a Rails application, because sometimes, unfortunately, we do have bad actors. We kind of want to stop them from, you know, messing everything up. So of course, the first thing I did was went over to ChatGPT, used GPT-4 and went, hey man, how do you do this? So I, I specified using device and constraints to get something similar to what I was looking for. And it came back with something pretty interesting. So we're gonna go ahead and step through this. Now it does make some uh, questionable decisions. Uh, like I probably wouldn't throw this into the lib directory personally speaking, uh, but I know people are very strongly opinionated about where to put files. So, uh, I mean, I'm sure this will become a whole debate, but at the end of the day, nobody cares. Just put the file wherever you want to and just load it in. Uh, if someone doesn't hire you because you're putting your file in, in lib instead of services or whatever, then you probably don't want to work there anyways. But okay, let's go ahead, let's step through this and let's take a look at the differences between stuff like the, uh, you know, using the IP address versus just a call to request.ip. So we're gonna get started by uh, kind of a, a ignoring what it's suggesting here. We're gonna do a Rails new video. And instead of doing this model here, uh, I think we're gonna do a scaffold instead so that we don't have to go into the console to create uh, you know, test IPs to figure out how to actually test this and make sure it's working. Because unfortunately you only have one IP address. You could of course set something up that's very clever and over-engineered, uh, but at the end of the day, we can just ban like local host or whatever to make sure this is working. So we're going to go ahead and CD into video. And then in here, we'll do a Rails G scaffold for a band IP. We'll give this a IP underscore address of type string. Now with the uh, device, which we're going to be using, you could tie that to these IP addresses. But at the end of the day, it, it again, it doesn't matter uh, if, you, if you're going to tie an IP address to the uh, user themselves. Uh, it might be a good way to flag multiple accounts as banned uh, if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, but then in the same vein, you wanna make sure that they are also just banned if they have that IP address and not if they're signed into that user, uh, because if they can just log into a different account, uh, then they're no longer IP banned in that sense. Then they're just like account banned, right? So that's something to take into consideration. Now that we've uh, generated the scaffold and wants us to do our DB migrate, that's fine. Now let's create this lib uh, file. So I'm going to do a code dot. Now in terms of the lib file, again, you can put this wherever you'd like to. Uh, I'm just going to follow what chat GPT suggested here because I'm really not in the mood to reinvent the wheel this morning. So we'll come over to our uh, Rails app, go into our lib, right click new file. Uh, and have VS Code close it. And then we'll do an IP underscore ban underscore constraint dot RB. And then we can go ahead and paste this in. So we'll paste this in, and this is the uh, first point right here. So it doesn't really go into this, but there is a difference between doing request.ip and doing request.remoteIP. Now the difference here is the remote IP is good for uh, additional checks like proxies while the simple IP check is not. So if we come over to Google, we can look for like uh, request.remoteIP versus request.ip in Rails, something like this. Uh, and you can see here, uh, request.ip returns a client IP even if that client is a proxy and remote IP is smarter and gets the actual client IP. So it's coming from Stack Overflow, of course, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, but you can find other resources that effectively say the same thing, uh, that r remote IP does a stronger check effectively. So we're going to be using remote IP here. Uh, if we don't find the IP in our band list, we return uh, a check if it's nil, uh, which is just how we're going to handle the logic in our route. So if we come over to our config now and our routes.rb, we can scroll down a bit. Uh, one thing to note, just like when you create your services directory or your service object directory or whatever random directory you're creating, uh, you do need to at least come into like your config and somewhere in here and add the path to your autoload. And then if you're running your Rails server and then you save this, you then need to stop and restart your server. Otherwise that file will not be found and you'll be stuck scratching your head wondering why it's not working even though it very clearly should be. So just make sure you restart your application whenever you do stuff like this. 
So we'll go ahead and uh, we don't actually need to start our server, but we are gonna come into our routes and this is where we deviate a little bit from what ChatGPT suggests again. So here, what we're gonna do is a bundle add device and make sure you don't copy this before you run the bundle add device because up until the point where you do the rails g device user command. So here we're gonna do a rails g device colon install. This will work just fine, but uh, up until this point where you do a rails g device user, this will throw an error for you if you have this in your routes already. So if I like take this, come over here and paste it in, just to show you, if we now try to generate this user command, this will fail and it will tell us uh, uninitialized constant user which is gonna be very confusing if you're trying to generate a user to see uninitialized constant user. Of course, it's uninitialized. I'm trying to initialize it right now, uh, but it actually has nothing to do with this command specifically. It has to do with, oops, it has to do with this line in your routes most likely. So if we just comment this out, we can then come up here, run this Rails G device user command again. And now you can see that gets created just fine. We can get rid of our comment too, and then we're good to go. Now for our constraints, it's using a home and an index uh, action. So I don't want to create a home controller. I'd rather create a Rails G pages, oops, Rails G controller pages, and I'll give it a home action, a band action, and a protected action. We'll go ahead and we'll run that just to give you like a, a sense of what all three options are here. So we can create these constraints. We have this constraint right here. We are then uh, going to have to include it at the top by saying require and then the name of the file. So it's gonna be the IP underscore band underscore constraint. And then if we want to protect something, we just wrap it in the uh, constraints block. So let's say this protected right here is gonna be wrapped in the constraints. So we just put it in here. So this is now a protected route. You could even go a step further and do something like uh, you could draw additional routes here to have an entire uh, protected route file. We've done that on the channel before, and this is it right here. So what this does is it allows you to draw an extra set of routes, which is gonna go inside of config, inside of a folder called routes, and then whatever's in there. So you could do something like uh, draw and then your protected routes. And then inside of config routes, you'd have a file called, you know, protected.rb. And then inside of protected.rb, you'd have a namespace, uh, oops, of protected do. And then whatever you want to put in here would be your protected route. So in this case, it would be that uh, git pages slash protected would go in here. You would have your protected routes inside of your constraints. We don't need that. Uh, and then you're, you're largely good to go at that point, right? So that's, that's how you could set up something like this. And then if you wanted the, uh, the band route to be, uh, set for, uh, you know, if, if you, if you are banned from the application, you want to be redirected words are hard this morning, you would then set up something similar to this line. Uh, maybe down here, let me hit control B to hide the side panel and F11. And effectively what this is gonna do is it's gonna match all your paths to a pages controller and the band action uh, via all. Let me just do this so it's a bit more readable. We'll do this via all with the constraints that has a Lambda function, anonymous function, you know, just like in, in JavaScript, the little arrow syntax, uh, where you take the request and you just check if this is not nil. So remember, the IP ban constraint returns nil or returns true if the IP is, and we can come back over to here, it returns true if the band IP does not exist, right? So if, if the, the band IP does not exist or if the user is not banned. So if the user is banned, it returns false or it, it returns true and we uh, can't access the page, right? Because it's inverting that. So if the band does not exist, it'll return true. We then invert that returns false and that's your constraint right there. A little bit confusing, but uh, that's sort of how this is set up. So now if we come over here and we do a, uh, a Rails S now, if we come over here and we go to uh, like slash 
pages slash protected. We'll see the issue with this approach, which is uh, it's going to tell us no route matches slash pages slash protected uh, because this namespace here is causing this to be uh, slash pages or slash protected slash pages slash protected path, which obviously isn't ideal. We don't want to have like multiple uh, multiple types of, of routing here. So what we're actually going to do, we'll get rid of this and we'll just go to get pages slash protected for now. You can of course go with this approach. Uh, I would just do a better name than protected. Otherwise you're going to get some weird uh, like slash protected slash pages slash protected logic and nobody wants that. Okay, so now that we have this and my, my RuneScape uh, notifications hopefully stop popping up, uh, we can uh, see what happens if we try to ban ourselves. So the first thing we wanna do is actually see what our IP is, which we can do over here in the ban constraints. We'll just come in here and we'll say puts uh, request IP is uh, request.remote IP inside of this little template. Now, if I refresh the page, we should hopefully see our request IP is set to colon colon one because we're on like a local adapter. In my case, I'm doing this through like uh, WSL2 on Windows. So this is in a Linux subsystem. So my IP is gonna be really weird. That's okay though. We can actually just come over to uh, localhost port 3000 slash band IPs, I think is what we called it. Uh, maybe let's actually come to localhost port 3000 slash rails info routes and see uh, what we called this, it was the uh, band underscore IP. So let's do that. Let's come over here, two, three, and then underscore. So we can create a new band uh, IP. We'll paste in that colon, colon one, create it. And now let's come over here to the protected path. You can see it redirects us to this band path. We can now set whatever we'd like inside of this band uh, page. So we come over here to our pages controller inside of band. You can have this render the band page with a status of forbidden. And then we can make sure this says whatever it had here. We'll come into app views uh, and the pages and the band page. And if we put this in, access denied, your IP address has been banned. If you think this is an error, please contact the site administrator. We can come over here and refresh. And now you can see that error we were getting initially is now appearing because our IP is banned. We can come over here and let's say this person's redeemed themselves. We take this and we destroy this IP. We can now come over to pages protected. You can just refresh and you can see that's working again. So it's it's working at like the route level without needing to go through any of the controllers for that logic. So again, it, it's just a silly little exercise. I thought it was funny because I was you know over here cutting trees and I was wondering about uh, you know all of the. Uh, all of the bots and stuff and how I would handle that on an actual website, which sparked the idea for this video. And then I usually like to go to chat GPT just to see what it comes up with. Uh, because you know, sometimes you learn things other times you don't like this really isn't helpful in my case at all. Uh, most of this isn't, uh, because I'm using WSL, right? So like these IP addresses are great, uh, but they're nowhere near relevant for the fact that my IP is being read as colon colon one. Right? So, uh, yeah, it's it's just interesting. You do a little bit of extra research after you ask it uh, with the general approach to see like with the, you know, remote IP or whatever. Uh, and then you just go from there. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully my tangent wasn't too much for you. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video.